Someone asked a question about significance of Salat. And I just want to say this, uh, brothers and sisters, don't just be satisfied with just making your Salat and, you know, um, but try when you make your prayer to feel something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try not to be thinking about other things. And I just want to mention this one hadith. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, was very observant. And he was watching a person, he was sitting in the masjid with some sahaba. And a Muslim came in and made salat and came to the Prophet and said, Assalamu alaikum. The Prophet said, Wa alaikum salam, farajit fa salli, fa inna kalam tu salli. Go back and pray because you have not prayed. You see, the Prophet is very observant. So he's watching the man, so the man went back and prayed again. And when he finished, he came to the Prophet and said, Assalamu alaikum, ya Rasulullah. The Prophet said, Wa alaikum salam, farajit fa salli, fa inna kalam tu salli. Go back and pray for you have not prayed. This happened three times. And the man said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, teach me to pray. I know no prayer better than this. And so the Prophet taught him to pray. And the thing that the man was doing wrong is that he was rushing through his prayer, not taking the time to really think and focus about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So please try to focus on your salat. One of the ways to help you focus on your salat, believe it or not, is the more surahs that you learn and understand what you're saying, why you're saying them, that will help you to focus. يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقول لا تقربوا الصلاة وأنتم سكارى حتى تعلموا ما تقولون. Oh, you who believe, do not approach prayer while you are intoxicated until you understand what you're saying. So many of us are not intox intoxicated, but yet we don't understand what we're saying. So when we memorize Quran, for some of us is like what someone would call, if you don't understand the words you're using, nonsensical words. It's not nonsensical at all. No, it's the words of Allah. Even if you didn't understand them, there's blessings. But better if you understood what you were reciting in the Quran and focus on the words that you're saying in the Salat. So, um, in my opinion, I found that learning the ayats of the Quran and what they mean help us to focus, inshallah. Allah Azza wa Jal honored all children of Adam. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ We honored all children of Adam. Who are you to look down on another human being? Allah says people that are special to Allah, they have humility when they walk. يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا But then how do you know if you're humble? How can you check? Is there a litmus test? Yes, there is a test. And Allah gives us the test in the ayah. If you're asking yourself and I'm asking myself, am I humble or am I arrogant? How would I know? Well, here's the test. وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا When people who have no control over their emotions talk to them, when idiots talk to them, when obnoxious people talk to them, when arrogant people talk to them, when ignorant people talk to them, when angry people talk to them, when insulting people, disrespectful people talk to them, and somebody insults you, it hurts. When somebody talks to you badly, it hurts. But Allah calls all of those people jahilun. Jahil actually in Arabic is the opposite of aqil. Jahil means someone who has no control over their emotions. A bad word comes in their mind, it comes out of their mouth. They don't think about it. So you're driving in the streets of Qatar, and some guy cuts you off, and you honk your horn, and he stops his car, and he gets out of the car, and he at you. And you're like, oh yeah? I'm going to show you. And you start responding back. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمْ مُجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا Eh, سَلَامًا Assalamu alaikum. Okay, sorry. You're right. I'm wrong. Go. Go. <laughs> you have to learn to do that. And if you can't do that, then you are disqualified from category number one. You want to be in category number one, and you will. Allah does not say if. If.
if you see, if, if ignorant people talk to you, if you know, obnoxious people address you, Allah says, when? I talked to you about the difference between if and when yesterday. When means it will happen. If means it might happen. Allah says, it, there's, no, there's no possibility percentage it might happen to you, it might not happen to you. It will happen to you. It will happen to you. It happens to me all the time. All the time. I was at a masjid, not over here in America, I was at a masjid, and I was sitting in the, uh, talking to some board members about some program I wanted to do, and a brother walked in, and he heard that I wanted to teach Arabic. He was an Arab fellow, he was an Egyptian fellow, and he heard that I wanted to teach Arabic. And I'm, he's like, you teach Arabic? And I was like, yeah, a little bit. And he said, where are you from? I was like, Pakistan. And he said, oh yeah? And he took out a napkin, and he said, write the alphabet for me. So I wrote down the English alphabet for him. <laughs> and he said, you see, you don't know Arabic. I was like, yeah, you're right, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then he started teaching me the alphabet, 30 minutes. I sat there and I learned the alphabet with him. And then he had to go, and then he left. And that night, that night, at the same masjid, they asked me to give a lecture, the importance of learning Arabic. If you go on YouTube and you search how to learn Arabic and why learn Arabic, why study Arabic, that lecture was at that masjid. And that guy was in the first row, smiling at me the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> but he comes to me and says, you, Pakistani, you're gonna teach Arabic? I'm gonna go, oh yeah? Well, sh sh no, 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 wait, wait. It's okay, it's all right. You're right, I don't know anything, it's okay. Don't get worked up. Don't get all full of yourself. If people speak to you in that way, it's okay, they have a right. You know, and, and you, you don't know why people speak to you in this way. There may be some other things going on in their life. You know, and they come to you and they let their anger out on you. You have to be kind of merciful and courteous to people. They were, they were women, they were men that came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and started yelling at him. From the Badu, they were Muslims, they started yelling at him. And you know, the Prophet ﷺ didn't get upset, he just calmed them down. The Sahaba would have killed them. He said, no, relax. Let it, just peace. You know, this is a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. When people say things that make you angry, you just gotta calm down. And by the way, guys, men over here, your wife will say a lot of things that make you angry, boy. Oh, ho, 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 ho. And when you hear that, you don't say that she's jahil, but you do say salam. Just be quiet. Don't talk back. Sisters upstairs, ladies, your husbands will say things that will boil your blood. Oh my God, you will get angry. And Allah has given you a special power. I have three sisters, I have a wife, and I have four daughters. I know girls have special powers. And their superpower is they can answer you in a way that will like stab you in the heart. Oh my God, they have the most amazing answers. They'll be like, ah! But you, sisters, when your husband is out of control and he's becoming too emotional or too angry, shh, salam. Change the subject. And salaman, qalu salaman does not mean that Allah says you have to say salaman, somebody's fighting, you're like, hey, salaman, salaman, salaman. <laughs> not like that. That's not what that means. Let me tell you what salaman, salaman could be a hal here in grammar. You know what that means? They speak calmly. They don't just say the word salam, they speak calmly, they speak peacefully, they speak in a way that disarms, that doesn't make you angry, you know? And so for example, you know, one time I was sleeping in the masjid, I was, a, I was in the atikaf and I was sleeping in the masjid. And you know when you're sleeping, you don't know which, you which way you turn. So I'm sleeping and I woke up because somebody kicked me in the stomach. <laughs> it was a really old gentleman in our community, he was an Afghani fellow, and he was also making a takeoff. He didn't speak any English, any Arabic. He just spoke Pashto only. And he kicked me in the stomach. And I wake up like, oh. And I look at him like. <laughs> and he goes, Quran. My back was towards the bookshelf, which the, where the masahib was. You can't have your back to the Quran, so he kicked me in the stomach. Now I could get up and say, come on. You could have woken me up nicely. or I'm fasting. And then you kicked me in the stomach too. And, but you know what I did? I just hung out with him afterwards. I just sat down with him. I said, can I read some Qur'an to you? You can correct my Qur'an. And we, we just spoke in sign language. 
and I recited Quran to him, and we just hung out the whole time. You have to deal with people peacefully. You have to calm down when you deal with people. You will meet all kinds of people, all kinds of temperaments. Some, some of you are stuck with a boss. Like he's always angry, he wakes up angry. He, he, you know, he's eating and he's angry. Even, he's angry when he's smiling, even when he's angry. You know? You have that kind of a boss. But you know what? You have to learn to deal with it peacefully. Peacefully. You have employees. You have, some of you are teachers. You have students that make you angry. You got to calm down. You can't get angry in the classroom. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is told, we were told, inni bu'ithtu mu'alliman. He says, I was sent as a teacher. He's sent as a teacher. He never got angry at people. Not necessarily, never. You know? His servant is telling us that he lived with him and then he's, and he never told him, do the, why did you do this? Why didn't you do this? The entire time. SubhanAllah. And that's your slave. That's not even your employee. That's your slave. He never said this to them. So qalu salaman is really important. And why is it important? Because what, the next time you have to force yourself to be humble and calm things down and not respond in anger, then you tell yourself, I'm doing this because I want to be from Ibadur Rahman. This is category number one. Category number one. People who can control their anger. People who can control their pride. People who can let go of their ego and just diffuse a situation. Even if they're right. Even if they're right, they just say, it's okay, it's not worth it. It's not worth the fight. You know? I'll tell you an interesting story of Imam Abu Hanifa. Rahimahullah. Imam Abu Hanifa, obviously, you know, a great faqih of his time, and then after, people are coming to him for fatwa all the time, and his, he, his mother had a question. And she asked a question, so she, he told her the answer, and she said, you don't know anything. So your mother can say that to you, right? I'm gonna go ask that one over there. And that guy that she wanted to go ask, he was a da'i. He wasn't a alim, he was a da'i. Da'i means he can give people a reminder, he can tell people about taqwa, but he doesn't know about fiqh or sharia or anything like that. So his mother goes and asks him. And he says, let me do some research, I'll get back to you. And he comes back to who? <laughs> he was like, hey, your mom came over and she was like, she had a question. And he's like, okay, here's the answer, but don't tell her I told you. <laughs> right? Sometimes you will have people in your own family that don't like hearing from you. Maybe you became closer to the deen, but they're not that close to the deen. And that makes you angry. It makes you angry that some women in your family don't wear hijab. It makes you angry some young men in your family don't pray. You get mad at them. No, don't get angry at them. Speak with them peacefully. Speak with them calmly. Your anger will only take them further away from deen. They won't bring them closer. You know, you have to have a soft heart towards those who are not there yet. You were not praying five times a day. There was a time when you weren't like that. If somebody spoke to you angrily, would you start praying or go further away? Think about that. Think about that. Allah softened your heart. So you wait until Allah softens theirs. And you have to be soft to people. I remind people that Allah Azza wa Jal told Musa alayhi salam to be nice to Fir'aun. To be nice to Fir'aun. Fir'aun tried to kill Musa alayhi salam when he was just a baby. Fir'aun killed thousands of babies every year. He called himself God. There are so many reasons to hate Fir'aun. And Allah says, when you go to him, وَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنَا If you have to be nice to Fir'aun, what about your wife? What about your husband? What about your children? What about your cousins, your brother, your uncle? These are the people that make us angry. These are the people. Family makes you really angry, I'm telling you. I know. Siblings make you angry. And these are the people that deserve the most soft responses from us. We have to change the way we, we behave with them. This is qalu salaman. Okay, this is category number one. 